What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel and today I have a very exciting video for you guys because it has come to light for everybody that the tier 0.5 set is going to be the new bis for some of the classes, especially rogues. This is absolutely going to be your new bis moving into phase 5 and AQ. So all rogues are trying to get it, but this quest chain is actually going to go over the exact same thing for everybody. I'm just going to specifically focus on rogues a little bit and then we're going to go into the entire quest chain so i'll have a timestamp in the description that'll let you know when to skip to so i can go over all of the quest chain all of the individual quests this is a very long and very tedious quest and there's a lot of things you need to bring for it so i've been getting a lot of questions almost every day that i've been streaming pretty much asking people exactly how to get this gear how much it's gonna cost and what exactly you need to do to get all of your Shadowcraft gear. If you don't already know exactly how good this gear is, it is a DPS increase for both swords and daggers. If you are now running the current phase four BIS gear, it's a bigger upgrade for sword spec, but either way, no matter who you are, you are gonna wanna get this set and I'm gonna break down exactly how to get it in this video today. So welcome to my channel. My name is Sarth as always. If you like this sort of content, just like and subscribe. I'm going to be pumping them out lately. Real fast before I get into it, make sure to check out the Discord channel if you haven't already. I'm going to post a link in the description and we do a lot of theory crafting in there as well as I'm creating some disc only videos and there's a lot more in there like UI and other things. So let's dive right in. So the very first thing I want to break down for you guys is exactly what you need to get before you can get the Dark Mantle set in its entirety. And the reason I want to go with this at the very beginning is because a lot of people just want to know exactly how much things are going to cost or exactly what other things they need to get now. Basically all of these you can get off the auction house except for a couple things. But I'm going to break it down right at the beginning before we go into the quests individually and things like that. Outside of having eight of eight of your tier zero set, your dungeon set already, you're going to need all of these things here. First off is 220 raw gold. Next, you'll need one delicate Arcanite converter, which is an Arcanite bar and an ironweb spider silk. Arcanite bars might go up in price at the beginning of next phase because they will be used for the Arcanite buoy for the people that are trying to get the bug mount. Next you'll need 10 stone scale oil which is pretty easy to get, 4 greater eternal essence, 10 goblin rocket fuel, 3 dark iron bars which are all just 8 dark iron ores and you need to be able to smelt them within black rock depths, 3 moon cloth, 20 enchanted leather, 4 cured rugged hides, and I would also suggest getting these right now because they will also go up in price at the very beginning of the phase because they will be used for wizard oils as well. Four dark runes. The next one is a little bit interesting. This was going to be the biggest and most expensive thing on the list and this is the Flask of Supreme Power. This is still going to be the most expensive thing on the list but it's not going to be as expensive. We don't know exactly what price but Blizzard actually made a blue post today addressing the Black Lotus economy and so now there will be more and more Black Lotus in the world so the price of that should be dropping. When I checked the auction house to make this video, the price was 400 gold for a flask of supreme power. You'll also need three abyssal crests which are pretty easy to get, one of each of the twilight cultist pieces which you can either buy off the auction house or farm within minutes. A signet of beckoning fire, which is one dark rune and five fire bloom. And lastly, you'll need to be honored with Argent Dawn and friendly with Scenarian Circle, but you could later have somebody else summon the Duke for you. In just a raw gold price on my server currently, this will cost you exactly 1,108 gold and 50 silver. Again, things will fluctuate in price and I will link this little sheet in the description and also it's in the discord channel and now one last thing before we start getting into the shadowcraft gear itself and where to find each of the shadowcraft gear pieces you will need to get every single piece eight of eight of the shadowcraft pieces before you can get all of the dark mantle set and the real lockout here is that you slowly but surely get one piece or two pieces or three pieces per quest but the best pieces of the Dark Mantle set are the last quest, 
The quest itself is even named saving the best for last, and that's where you get your helm and the chest. So the breakdown itself is that the first quest and the easiest quest, it still is a chain, but it requires 20 gold to turn in, and that will give you your bracers. The next quest is gonna give you the belt and gloves. The third quest will give you the shoulders, boots, and legs. And then the final quest, of course, is giving you the helm and chest, the best pieces. You are gonna wanna have access to all of these pieces to mix and match the four piece as you get new pieces in AQ to continue to have the set bonus that is the entire reason for this being OP. And because this is coming out so soon, there's three pieces that you can buy now off the auction house and they've already seen a skyrocket in price and they're only gonna continue to go up even more. So if you find cheap ones, buy them right now. You can find the belt, usually the cheapest, but then it's also the bracers and the gloves. You can also find every single one of these pieces in a dungeon and it's not terrible to farm it yourself. So I would actually, if you're saving money, suggest farming them and just as you start a dungeon group, just reserve that Shadowcraft piece if you have to. If not, I mean, you're the only rogue. Some people might roll against you because the price is going up pretty significantly. So try to get in there early and get it before people realize the bracers are worth like 300 plus gold sometimes, you know? But let's go over really quickly where to find every single one of the Shadowcraft pieces. As I mentioned, on the auction house already, you should be able to find the belt, gloves, and bracers, but you can also find them in dungeons themselves. There's three main dungeons you need to go into, and two of those are two-part dungeons, and that is gonna be Skolomance, Stratholm, both live, and undead, and then as well, Ubers, well, Blackrock Spire, because there's upper and lower. So let's start with the first dungeon you're gonna go to, and you can get three pieces in here, and that is gonna be Skolomance. You can get the boots off Rattlegore, you can get the helm off of the last boss, Dark Master Gandling, and then the trash can actually drop the bracers, which usually are selling for probably the most right now. Any one of the trash can drop the bracers, and you might have to run this quite a few times to get the pieces, or you can get lucky. Moving on straight from there, we can go to Stratholm, and you can enter either the live or undead side, or just do a full clear. Both sides can drop the bracers as well, so watch out for that on trash. If you go over to the live side, head over to Cannon Master Willy. He's behind that closed door. He's the optional boss and he drops the shoulder. Then you can head over straight to the undead side and in the undead side, it's gonna be the last boss, Baron Rivendeer, that drops your pants. The next place you're gonna go is Blackrock Spire. In lower Blackrock Spire, Shadow Hunter Boshka Jin can drop the gloves. He has a good chance of dropping the gloves, but you can also actually find these gloves off of random trash within the dungeon. Moving on from there, you head over to Upper Blackrock Spire, and General Dracosath, of course it's the last boss again, will drop your chest piece. And now you're set. Now you're ready to get moving on to just specifically farming the Dark Mantle set. You have your 8 of 8 Shadowcraft, and you've already bought all of the consumes and mats you need to turn in all of the quests. So now let's go through all the quests in order. The first quest to start everything off is called An Earnest Proposition. This is both for Horde and Alliance. It's the same name. The quest giver is found in Thrall's Chambers if you're Horde, and for Alliance, it's an NPC named Deliana within the Ironforge throne room. This quest is very easy, and so for Horde, you're gonna go collect 15 Venom Santhibles from Spiders and Scorpions in Silithus, as well as turn in 20 gold. Your first little chunk of the gold, but that's not the big one. If you're Alliance, you'll head over to Winterspring and you're going to kill Bears and Winter Sabers to get 15 blood samples from them, as well as turning in that 20 gold. Boom! First quest done. Let's go! The next quest is called a Supernatural Device, and this is going to start you off by both Horde and Alliance heading off to Gadget Set. Right after that, you're going to need to do an Ectoplasmic Distiller. This quest is where you're going to actually need to start dipping into the consumes you got. So you're going to turn in your Delicate Arcanet Converter, your four Greater Eternal Essences, 10 Stone Skin Oil, and then you need 25 Volcanic Ash, which you can actually get from the Lava Pools in Burning Steps. This is a quest item, so you can't get them beforehand. You'll also turn in the next 40 gold. The next quest is called Hunting for Ectoplasm, and this will send you around the world to get different ectoplasm samples. So you need to get 12 Scorched Ectoplasms from Silithus, then you can go to Winterspring and kill the Suffering Highborns and the Anguished Highborns for another 12. Then next up, you're gonna head over to Eastern Plaguelands and kill Banshees and Ghosts. Turn this in to get a portable power source. 
And this is just gonna need you to go find Magma Lord Bok in Burning Steps and get his Magma Core. He's a level 60 non-elite, so it's not really an issue. Following that is a Shifty Merchant. This quest is pretty simple as well. You're just gonna need to find an imp within the Dark Whisper Gorge here in Winter Spring and purchase a Fell Elemental Rod. Then head back to Gadgetson. After that, you're gonna return to the original quest giver, Deliana or Mokvar, so either Thrall's Room or Ironforge Throne Room. And there you have it, you've just finished the second quest line, and that is gonna be turned in with a final quest called Just Compensation, where you get your belt and your gloves. So have those on you as you turn them in for the new upgrades. That same quest giver is gonna give you the next part of the chain, and that's gonna be called In Search of Antheon. And that is gonna send you off to Stratholm, where you'll use a quest device to be able to talk to the ghost, Antheon Harmon. He gives you a quest, a dead man's plea. What you need to do here is just clear Stratholm undead within 45 minutes. It's actually pretty basic. It was a challenge back in the day, potentially, but it's pretty simple nowadays with a good group. Just stomp through Strat UD. Next quest, Proof of Life, where you'll just bring the Siddha's Locket back to Antheon. And now is gonna be when you turn in the next part of the mats that you've been saved up. For Antheon's Stranger Quest, you need to turn in three Dark Iron Bars, 20 Enchanted Leather, three Moon Cloth, and four Cured Rugged Hides. Once you've turned that in, Antheon will give you a quest to go find his old friend, which is basically just taking an item that he gives you over to the Dire Maw Library. From here, you're gonna get the quest Farland's Vendetta, which is going to have you farming ogres either here in Dire Mall or in Blackrock Spire to get 25 ogre war beads. The next quest is the Instigator's Enchantment. And for this one, you're gonna need to turn in four dark ruins, eight large brilliant shards. You'll also need to get Jeering Spectre's Essence, which you can get from ghost mobs within Dire Mall West. The next quest is actually a pretty fun one. This one's called The Challenge, where you have to head over to BRD and head into the arena. So if you are a warrior and used to farming SGC, welcome back to this PTSD-filled fun zone. Here you're gonna place a banner of provocation, and then you're gonna actually fight a battle that's kind of like a PvP fight, where the actual enemies will head off to your clothies first, so you can use some CC and slow effects to make sure that they don't kill your healer first. This is not too challenging as well. Pretty much just have fun with it. And this is the end of the next part of the quest, which will give you Antheon's parting words, which of course for Horde and Alliance is back to that same original quest giver. And this will give you your boots, pants, and shoulders. Congratulations, you're kind of almost there. So now you're thinking, wow, there can't be much more, and you might be a little mistaken. Once you've gotten your next pieces of tier 0 0.5, you're gonna get another quest called Bodily's Unfortunate Fate, where you're gonna have to travel to Blackrock Mountain and use the extra dimensional Ghost Revealer to find Bodily near BRS. He's gonna give you a quest called The Three Kings of Flame, where you need Encendrite of Incendius, Ember of Emberseer, Cinder of Cinders, and Hollowed Brazier. So we're gonna need to get all four of these items. Lord Incendius is within Blackrock Depths and he can be soloable. Power Guard Emberseer is within Blackrock Spire. He's that first boss, so he's pretty easy to get to. The Cinder of Cinders drops off of the Duke of Cinders in Silithus, so you're gonna need someone to summon the Duke of Cinders and you'll kill him. And then the Hollowed Brazier can actually be purchased from the Argent Dawn, and that's why you're gonna actually need to have the Honored Reputation with them, which by now you probably already have. The next part of the quest is called Three Kings of Flame. And here, you're gonna actually get one of four random quests to either go to Tears Hand in Eastern Plaguelands, Purgatation Isle in Hillsbrad Foothills, Hive Regal in Silithus, or Frost Whisper Gorge in Winter Spring. Here, you're gonna have to kill elites there to get the item that you need to drop. Then you're gonna head back to the quest giver and you're gonna get the quest for the left piece of Lord Balthalak's amulet. These all coincide with whichever one of the original quests that you got, but you're either gonna have to go into Stratholm, Skolomance, Lord Blackrock Spire, or Dire Maul, and you'll have to use the brazier you get to summon the mobs, kill them, and then of course, loot them for that left piece of the amulet. As you head back to Bodily, he's gonna give you one more quest to basically do the exact same thing all over again, and you're gonna get another one of the three random quests left in the chain for you to do. 
and these quests are called I See Alcatraz in Your Future. This sends you right back to Tears Hand, Purgation Isle, Hive Regal, or Frost Whisper Gorge to get the next piece of the components, and right after that, again, you're gonna go look for the right piece, where you're gonna do the same thing that you did in the first part of this quest, but it's just gonna send you to whichever part coincides with whatever you got in the second part. And now we're almost done, guys. You are so close to being finished with this. The next quest is called Final Preparations. And this quest is gonna be the one where you're gonna have to turn in the Flask of Supreme Power. But like I mentioned earlier, because of that blue post, we are actually going to see the price of Black Lotus drop. So actually don't buy these just yet. Good luck, let's hope that these drop a lot. You'll also need to gather 40 Blackrock Bracers and these drop off of elite orc mobs within Upper Blackrock Spire. And pretty much last but least, we are going to have to summon Lord Valthalak. So the quest Mia Culpa Lord Valthalak is going to send you into Upper Blackrock Spire in the same room as the Beast. So you're going to have to clear it all the way, go in, kill the Beast, and then you're going to summon the boss. Once you've killed the boss, you'll return his amulet and he will send you back to our boy Bodley. And from there, you've finally done it, guys. You are going to get the quest called Saving the Best for Last. And you're finally gonna get your helm and your chest piece. And there you have it, guys. We did it. We've completed our tier 0.5 chain. Oh my god, it is very long and very tedious, and it requires you traveling around the world and into multiple dungeons multiple times to get it done, but it is absolutely worth it, especially if you are a rogue, because this is going to be your brand new Biss. I know this was a bit of a longer one, but this is a really, really long quest chain, so I wanted to cover everything for you guys in this video. As usual, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you want to hang out with me live or just watch me playing the game and have any questions for me, you can stop by Twitch TV slash Sarth and I am streaming multiple days a week. The schedule will be on there as well. Make sure to join the Discord channel to come hang out with us. And there we have it. Good luck getting your 0.5, everybody. I suggest just getting a group together that's all going to be getting their set as well and knocking it all out. It's going to be tedious. <sighs> but good luck out there. Peace.